Digitizing your photos is the best way to keep your photos safe. But as they say, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. In this video, I'm going to walk you through six simple steps to getting your photos ready for scanning. Hi, I'm Amanda Lithcott, the photo organizer, and I'm all about helping you preserve and share your precious photo and video memories without getting overwhelmed. If you're looking to rediscover life's special moments and protect them for future generations, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Scanning your old printed photos is definitely something I would recommend to keep your photos safe. But there is nothing more soul destroying than digitizing all of your photos and discovering that thanks to a pesky bit of dirt, it is all totally useless. And you have to start all over again. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my six simple steps to getting your photos ready for scanning. But why should you digitize? Digitizing all your photos will firstly save you a ton of space. Just think of that stack of albums and photos that you have hanging around that if you took all of those, digitized them, you could then chuck away all those space sucking albums. And then there is to prevent damage or loss. Should the worst happen and you only have one copy of your photos in that little printed album, just think how upsetting that would be. But by digitizing your photos, you've preserved them for the future and making sure they are safe to be your legacy. Also, as part of the digitization process, you can do some restoration, bring those photos back to their former glory. As photos deteriorate over time, especially photos that have been in some of those albums, by digitizing them, you can bring them back to life. Step one, remove from albums. Albums are not so good for your photos. All of those sneaky acids in the film that you sandwich it between do not like your photos and it can make them brittle and lose their colors. And not to mention the fact that albums are a right pain to scan as they are so big and bulky. So if you can remove them from the albums, as it's not only going to be better for your photos, but it will make scanning a lot easier and simpler. Check out my video on how to set your photos free from those sticky albums if you're struggling to get them out. Step two, throw away what you don't need to scan. There is no point wasting time scanning something that you ultimately do not want to keep. My rule of thumb is to throw away any random views that I have no idea what they are, images of photos that I can get a better image from Googling, and any bad or fuzzy shots, and of course, all those duplicates. They don't need to be scanned because unless there are special memory, they are just not worth it. Step three, get your photos in order. Before you start scanning, it's always a good idea to sort your photos into sections. My secret is to use my shoebox and index card trick. Take an old shoebox and pop the photos into it, separating them with index cards into sections that you want to file them as, such as years or events. It is a great way to keep track of what's going on. Step four, clean them. It seems a bit of an obvious one, but yes, Give them a clean. First, make sure they are free from glue, staples, clips, double-sided sticky tape that you have used on your photos. Then use a soft dry cloth or an air can to remove any dust and dirt or other particles that could potentially scrape the photos or impact the quality of your scans. A good check before you start scanning is to fan the stack of photos to make sure there aren't any stuck together or there's not any sneaky bits of dirt or sticky tape that you have missed. Step five, capture the photo notes. No doubt there are some notes with your photos that would be really useful to capture, whether it's people, locations, or times that you want to add to the digital file later. You can capture it on a computer, a piece of paper, or the back of the photos if you are scanning on the backs of the photos as well. Do whatever works for you. However, if you are going to write on the back, do not write with a pen that will transfer to other photos or bleed through the paper. The best option is to use a soft pencil written gently so it doesn't press through the photo. Step six, decide on your naming convention. It is always a good idea to choose a consistent naming convention before you launch into scanning. Choose a naming convention to match the order of the archive that you have 
so that if you have to go and rescan it because maybe it wasn't quite the right quality the first time, you can easily find it. And it's always a good idea to add it to the index card dividers for all those with a memory like a fish. So you're all set ready to scan. But before you launch into scanning, one other major scanning tip from me. Double and triple check the settings on your scanner before you start. There is nothing more depressing than spending an hour scanning to only find that you did it in the wrong DPI setting or the wrong file format. So check and check again. So there you have it, my six simple steps on how to prepare your photos for scanning. What other tips and tricks do you use to prepare your photos for scanning? Leave them in the comments below. Are you struggling to actually start organising your photos? Don't know where to start? I have put together a simple, straightforward, quick start guide to organising your photos that's linked in the description below. So click through and I will see you there. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead with a like and a share. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.